What is the purpose of education? This is such a broad question to find the answer to. However, Gert Biester has assisted this process in saying that the point of education is that students learn something, they learn it for a reason, and they learn it from someone. Furthermore, education always needs to engage with questions of content, purpose, and relationships. Supporting this, Gloria Ladson Billings argues that classrooms must meet three criteria an ability to develop students academically, a willingness to nurture and support cultural competence, and the development of the socio political or critical consciousness. Thus, meaning it is distinguishable by three broad propositions or conceptions regarding self and other, social relations, and knowledge. Likewise, Biesta has determined that the purpose is a multi dimensional question because education tends to function in relation to three domains qualification, socialization, and subjectification. Therefore, discussions about the purpose of education need to distinguish between ways in which education can contribute to qualification, socialization, and subjectification. Qualification has to do with the transmission and acquisition of knowledge and skills and dispositions. This allows students to do something. Furthermore, it seeks to prepare young people for their lives in complex modern societies. Gobby and Walker have criticised education in saying that it is a preparation for future living rather than being part of the process of living. Socialisation is partly an explicit aim of education, but as research in sociology of education has shown, also works behind the scenes. For example, in the ways in which education reproduces existing social structures, divisions and inequities. We represent and initiate children in traditions and ways of being and doing, such as cultural, professional, political and religious traditions. Even if socialisation is not the explicit aim, it will still function this way, as for example has been shown by research on the hidden curriculum. Education also impacts positively or negatively on the student as a person. This is subjectification, which has to do with the way in which children come to exist as subjects of initiative and responsibility rather than as objects of the actions of others. Emancipation can be understood as a process of subjectification. Although we can distinguish between the three domains of purpose, they cannot be separated. To say that the question of what constitutes good education is a composite question is not to suggest that the three domains of education can be and should be seen as separate. The contrary is the case. When we engage with one domain, the other two are always subconsciously at play. The current issue in education is the emphasis of achievement in the domain of qualification where excessive pressure on students and teachers to perform in that domain is beginning to have a negative impact in the domain of subjectification. The idea that what matters is academic achievement in a small number of curricular domains, particularly language, science and maths, and it is this common sense of view which has given so much credibility to studies such as PISA and NAPLAN. This is supported in government and policy documents such as the Australian Curriculum, the Melbourne Declaration and the QCAA. The regulators, government, funders and legal standards such as the ones listed above have requirements for accountability to show that education meets certain predetermined standards when regulating good education. Good performance in practice is focusing on performance indicators chosen for ease of measurement and control rather than because they measure accurately what the quality of good performance is. This one-sidedness always comes at a price, the price we are willing to pay for a temporary emphasis on one of the domains. Hattie suggests that although there is more to education than academic performance, in the end, this is what's supposed to matter most, thus reinforcing a one-dimensional view of education in which only qualification seems to count. Fiesta highlights that the current emphasis in many countries and settings on just enhancing academic achievement in the performance demand of qualification comes at a very high price perhaps too high of a price. The issue with the weight that the qualification domain holds is that students are therefore treated as unequal with regards to their intelligence. When the subjectification domain is applied, emancipation processes are employed, thus meaning that all students share equal intelligence in an unequal society. This is important as it means that students can become independent and autonomous to be able to think for themselves, to make their own judgments and to draw their own conclusions. We can then go further to say that education requires judgment, and if this judgment were of the teacher, then it would follow that teachers have ample space and opportunity to exercise such judgment. Yet it is here that we encounter problems in the ways in which the professional spaces for teachers is currently being constructed and policed. Without explicit engagement with the question of the purpose of education, 
the idea that there can be evidence about what works remains a rather empty suggestion or with a push to base professional practice on evidence about what works, a particular idea of education is supposed to work for is already assumed, either implicitly or explicitly. And more often than not, as Biesta indicates, the assumption is that education should work for academic achievement rather than across a full spectrum of educational domains. The role of the teacher is therefore vital as they are the ones who are making the final decision within the classroom. They need to be making value-based judgments that are not informed by instrumental values, but by ultimate values. Values about the aims and purposes of education. If teachers are not explicit about their views about the aims of education, or if they do not tackle questions as to what constitutes good education head-on, they run the risk of statistics and data making the decisions for them.